Welcome to the first lesson of microeconomics. My name is David Hebert, and today we're going to be talking about a couple of key concepts that help illustrate some things that you do in your everyday life. Today's topics include substitutes and complements. When we talk about substitutes, we economists don't just mean the people that come in and fill in for your teacher when they're sick. We mean any two or more goods that can be used for the same purpose. For example, if you were in Detroit, Michigan, and you wanted to get to Washington, D.C., you would have two options. You could fly there, or you could drive yourself there. In Big Rapids, Michigan, where we're filming this, it's starting to get cold here at night. Turning up the heat and grabbing an extra blanket can also be viewed as substitutes, because both will help keep you warm. What makes these pairs of goods substitutes is the fact that either one can be used to do the same thing. In the case of traveling to Washington, D.C., both flying and driving will get you there. When it comes to staying warm at night, both turning up the heat or putting on an extra blanket on your bed will keep you warm. To easily identify substitutes in your life, ask yourself the following question. What would I do if the price of X was a billion dollars? Whatever you come up with would be a substitute for that good. Now this leads us to a very important concept in economics that is often used to mislead people. The concept of needs. A need is something that has literally zero substitutes. Ask yourself this, can you think of anything that has literally zero substitutes? Some of your teachers might say that you need to read your textbook in order to pass the exam. But is that really true? Of course not. Today, there are lots of examples of other sources of information that aren't your textbook. You're watching a substitute for reading your textbook right now. But what about something like water? Surely we need water, right? Wrong again. Ask yourself this. What would you do if the price of water was a billion dollars? Would you pay that price, or would you go get a sports drink instead? Now I know what you're thinking. There's water in sports drinks. So have I been beaten? Not just yet. Because there are different sources of water that the sports drinks producers can use, each of which is going to be a substitute for the other. Sports drinks manufacturers can get their water from rain, glaciers, rivers, or streams, or they can get it from the tap or various other sources, each of which is a substitute for each other. This gets at a very important point in economics. When we say things like you don't need water, clearly we're not talking about all water. We're only talking about each particular bottle of water that you could go purchase. Dasani, Avion, and Aquafina are all water, but they're all substitutes for one another. The second concept that we're covering today is the concept of complements. Now, if substitutes are things that we use instead of one another, complements must be things that we use together. Some common examples include hot dogs and hot dog buns, because for the most part, people eat hot dogs and hot dog buns together. Another example would be left shoes and right shoes, because again, we wear left shoes and right shoes at the same time. To easily identify complementary goods, ask yourself the following question. If I had more of X, what else would I want in order to fully enjoy X? Whatever goods you come up with would be a complement to X. For example, if I gave you a pack of hot dogs, would you also want a pack of hot dog buns? My guess is yes. Or what about if I gave you one left shoe? You'd be able to make one heck of a fashion statement wearing two different shoes, but my guess is you'd be happier with the right shoe too. Let's do a few more examples. Are coffee and creamer complements or substitutes? For most people, these are going to be complementary goods, because it's difficult to imagine someone sitting down and enjoying a cup of creamer in the morning, but we can easily imagine someone using coffee and creamer together. What about Domino's and Papa John's? Are these things substitutes or complements? If you had more Papa John's, would you also want more Domino's pizza in order to fully enjoy the Papa John's? Probably not. But if the price of Domino's were to go up to a billion dollars, would you consume more Papa John's pizza? My guess is yes. These goods must be substitutes then. To give you a little bit of a preview for the next lesson, ask yourself the following question. What would happen to your willingness to purchase hamburger buns if the price of hamburger patties were 10 times higher? Would you want to purchase more, fewer, or the same number of hamburger buns? If you answered fewer, you're well on your way to becoming a good economist. 